Hello everyone and welcome back to Subnautica. This is episode 9. Last time we went into the depths and we uncovered the disease research facility. Uh, it took a little bit of a weird journey to get here um, and then we ended off the episode realizing we did not bring a purple tablet with us and that would have uh, probably been smart considering the fact that we're heading to uh, one of the alien facilities um but while we're here we're gonna see if we can look around and maybe find one if not we'll go back to our inventory and and gather them uh but we're gonna take we're gonna take a look around here and see what happens but we may have to just head back maybe pop another um ooh, maybe pop another beacon um at the cave entrance and then stock up and come back are we in like a oh right so i guess they've kept anything that's maybe diseased and they've put it in like a display i was gonna be like is this some kind of museum but we're also in a disease research facility ray species on 4546b different species of ray indigenous to this planet each adapted to different environments. The specimens are 99.99% .99 genetically identical to those encountered on the planet today, suggesting that rays in particular have undergone little evolutionary mutation in the past millennium. Ghost rays, jelly rays, crimson rays, and rabbit rays likely all share a common evolutionary ancestor. The alpha ray would have evolved deep in the ocean trenches, quickly growing in line with available food supplies. It would have most resembled the ghost ray in size and appearance, with translucent skin for camouflage and forward-mounted eyes for hunting, a fast and fearsome stalker of small creatures in the dark. While some rays have stayed within the limits of the cave systems where they first evolved, others are relatively more recent adaptations. To, uh, sorry, uh... Yeah, adaptations to new environments, likely the results of overpopulation. All of the rays on 4546B have given up uh, predation in favor of herbivorous scavenging and use poisonous flesh to protect themselves. Oops. Okay. Gotcha. There's our uh, ray variations. Um, egg, perhaps? Yes. Egg. Sea dragon egg, okay. The large egg is held in a hermetically sealed environment and has been chemically sterilized. Without the means at the facility to house a fully grown sea dragon specimen, it is possible the aliens sought to study these egg uh, the egg laying and incubation process. To what end is unclear. Yeah, just casually uh, sea dragon. Goddamn, okay. Um, and what is this? Rib cage. A display case containing an array of rib cages harvested from the indigenous life forms. There is a particular focus in this instance on vertebrate skeletal structures. While some of the skeletons match organisms encountered on this planet so far, most cannot be matched with confidence, suggesting either that there are species out there not yet accounted for, or that they have become extinct since these samples were collected. I've heard the pronunciation of... Uh, this word be either skeletal which makes sense for skeleton or skeletal and i don't know where that comes from for me but i swear i've heard it being pronounced skeletal before and it's kind of stuck in my brain but i always want to say skeletal i don't know i'm sure that there's probably people that pronounce it both ways pronunciations of words forever going to be an interesting thing in life i think everyone pron pronounces things differently um there is nice another ion cube i think i saw a glint of purple down there for a sec there damage report yeah i think i see a glimmer of purple down there it might be a purple tablet all right let's have a look damage report leviathan detected at facility perimeter closing at high speed exterior anchor cable impacted with massive force exterior anchor system buckling facility sinking collision with sea floor so it used to be higher up breaches detected in containment unit seven the leviathan eggs 
immediate specimen destruction protocol initiated, 314 specimens destroyed, one specimen unaccounted for, only one, evacuating staff to off-site sanctuaries, planetary quarantine protocol initiated, infected individuals may not leave the planet. So I think what we can maybe gather from this is the quarantine has been in effect for a really, really long time. And this infection seemingly at, at the start of the game, uh, our little AI was going like, <laughs> it's coming from the ship that crashed because of the radiation. But it seems that as new information comes in, uh, that might be true. It might be a different variation of an infection, but it looks like it's been here for a long time. Um, if I'm gathering that information correctly. I'm gonna bonk this sea moth quite regularly. Just taking it through in case I need. Ooh, hello. So one species unaccounted for. Dude. Skeletal remains. Look at this thing. Remains of research specimen. There's so much to discover in this place. This is cool. The skeletal remains of a vast predator housed within an artificial habitat. The environment constructed to house the specimen suggests it was kept alive in containment for research purposes for months or even years. Organic matter indicates the habitat once supported extensive plant life, though it has since decayed. When the facility collapsed, this specimen was either left to die or killed on the spot. Evolution. While it shares some skeletal traits with the biter and sand shark, including its distinctive double eye sockets, this fossilized specimen is significantly larger and features unusual forearms rarely seen in aquatic species. This species has likely gone extinct in the past thousand years, and its evolutionary relatives have evolved almost beyond recognition. No shit, it's got forearms. This thing can get jacked. Weird. I would like to go inside. So cool. Um, we're gonna eat this. I'm gonna eat my peeper real quick. Time to eat my peeper. Yeah. Oh, that was my... That was my special one, wasn't it? That was my special little guy. I don't know if you need an alive one to really analyze this advanced theory for the... Um, which one was it? Yeah, the enzyme host peeper. Because it does say recommended further research into enzyme origin. Maybe you just need to find the origin. Like it says there, not the not just more peepers. I think we're fine to eat this. I'm gonna eat it. Hopefully, it's fine. We've cooked all the bacteria out of it, so uh, should be fine. <laughs> okay. And then we've got like just random skeletal remains just scattered about. Just seeing if there's any other exits or entrances into this place. Hmm, okay. Let's take a look down here. Okay. I don't think the purples were based on the tablets at all, but instead... Biological evidence suggests indigenous life forms were brought to this location and subjected to intensive study. Whoa, the wizard fish dissections and autopsies going down over here. Biological matter. Okay, I thought this might have been a purple tablet from a distance. Warper parts. The organic parts on display contain DNA from dozens of different organisms largely originating off-world. They are in varying states of augmentation with advanced technologies. This production line setup suggests these self-warping constructs were built, maintained, and deployed by the aliens that designed this facility.
wait, so the the warpers were built? Self-warping quarantine enforcer unit. This life form shows signs of heavy genetic modification and extensive mechanical grafting. Its digestive and pulmonary systems have been replaced by an onboard battery receiving energy directly from the main grid and distributing it around the body. Miniaturized phase technology has been implanted beneath the skin and is triggered by the central nervous system, allowing the construct to teleport at will. The brain and central nervous system have been digitally augmented with advanced processing power and remote communications. Programmable hunter killer avoid. Is this what we, is this what these radio messages are about? Like patrol, new targets unaccounted for. And then the other one, nine new biological subjects designated hunting, analyzing. Sharing subject locations with other agents, maybe? So these warpers have actually been, like, created and augmented to be quarantine enforcers. So they, like, hunt down infected specimen and deal with them. Maybe that's, maybe that's why when we first encountered the warpers in the fourth episode around the Reaper Leviathan, it was not attacking me but now they're very, very aggressive towards me. And it must be because they're quarantine enforcers. Oh, that's really cool. It's great to see one up close without it attacking me or trying to teleport me into another dimension. Wow, okay. That's cool. Getting some discoveries here with that in mind. Okay, okay. data pertaining to the bacterium is being downloaded. Caution. Detecting atypical fluctuations in blood plasma proteins. A self-scan is strongly advised. I did a self-scan when we ran our base before, but we'll do another one. Self-scan complete. Bacterial infection has spread to the skin and pulmonary system. Medical report recorded to date to bank. It is imperative you find a way to neutralize the infection. Jesus, okay. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, that's horrifying. I like that our gloves come off for a little scripted sequence there, but like, it's still very effective. Whoa, okay, we're in trouble. <laughs> Kara con uh, Contagion Profile, Contagion Profile. Uh, this terminal contains extensive data regarding the bacterial contagion known, identified as Kara, first encountered during routine network expansion on outer worlds. Pandemic development. Network error resulted in routine quarantine procedure failure. Contagion was uploaded to and spread quickly through the core worlds. Confirmed deaths, 143 billion individuals. Bacterial mechanisms attaches to healthy living cells and mutates the basic genetic structure. Symptoms stage one, a gradual immune system failure. Stage two is the green skin lesions and flu-like symptoms. So we're stage two. Unpredictable alterations to biological structure is stage three. Stage four, complete shutdown of executive function. Emergency steps taken. Core worlds have been quarantined. Bacterial samples distributed to isolated disease research facilities for vaccine development. So there are other research facilities. Treatment procedures unknown. God damn. Okay. So we now have to fight off an infection before like the, and it's, it's aggressively developing. You've been infected with a previously unknown waterborne bacterium. It is currently multiplying in your bloodstream estimated incubation time, two weeks. Your immune system is currently combating the infection at low efficacy. You may already be experiencing flu-like systems and skin irritation. 
These will likely be exacerbated as the bacterium takes hold. Your immediate priority should be abatement and eradication of the infection. Salvage further alien research data on a possible vaccine. Investigate the mechanisms which have enabled the indigenous ecosystem to inhibit the symptoms of the infection. This is really incredible stuff. We're in a big, uh, like, data bank episode at the moment with what we're finding here. Damn. Okay. Is there any more to this place? Or we've come here and found a piece of the puzzle, I suppose. Like, we've found some information, but we're obviously going to need to find other facilities to figure this out. And we need a we need a purple tablet, which unfortunately is not here uh, to explore that barrier. So I'm going to need to have to... I'm going to need to go and come back so we can open that barrier. Seamoth is, you know, bigger than these hallways, so we're we'll trying my best here. Alright. If only I came here with a purple tablet, because there is data for us to download right there that is crucial. Okay, so what we're going to do is we put a beacon at that door and damn we're going to leave. Now we're going to go up. I have to remember how to get out of here and I, I don't know. don't remember how. Um gonna find our way out of here and then we're gonna place a beacon at the entrance um, so we can find our way back here to get that data download it's just called beacon 2 I, I haven't named that one because it's only gonna be there temporarily we're gonna keep the big alien gun beacon there for a long time I remember us entering yep yeah, from like a cave first so we're going to trace our steps out of here. I love that we're doing this with the Seamoth. Trusty Seamoth, baby. Prawn suit. Cyclops submarine. Who needs it? I would love a prawn suit, though. I need so We're going to... We'll, we will do that. Um, did I scan this thing? Look, it's like a very similar version to the thing that we saw in that facility. It's got the forearms and everything. I think I scanned this one. Yeah. Oh, yep. And then we checked that out. Okay, I think we're safe to find a place to head up. Um, something I think that I've noticed, by the way, about the Seamoth Perimeter Defense System I'm noticing as, as I'm pressing a specific button, is um, I think it actually has to be manually activated, uh, because I noticed that it hasn't actually triggered at all around enemies, and I thought that it would. Um, and it looks like if I press a button, it highlights it. Okay, they and it's got a it's got a cooldown. So I thought it was an automatic defense system. It turns out I have to activate it, and it uses uh, a significant amount of charge on the Seamoth as well, which, my friends, is why the solar charger comes in handy because you make it to the surface and you charge up your little batteries. You are at the surface. You solar charge your cells. And then you deep dive, and that's how that's how that works. Look at our massive rib cage. I think we came from this way. I would love a sea moth, like maybe like sea a speed boost. I don't think there's a is there a speed boost um, module because that would be great. The sonar I'm actually interested in. Detecting and displaying topographical data on the HUD. I think I want that. That would be really nice. And it's easy to build. I would like to put that in there. I mean, even the energy efficiency module would probably be nice. Um,
I'm not even sure actually how much um, the whole reinforcement is. It just hardens the chassis. Like it doesn't tell us specifically uh, how much. But the Mapo, the Mapo two is going strong. And this is definitely why we want to put a beacon down um, when we leave, because finding our way in was tough, but finding our way out is also just as tough. Um, we're not focusing on scavenging right now. There's a lot of stuff for us to get, but we're not going to. It'd be great to grab some deep sea materials though, and maybe try and make like some some garden beds, make a make some materials out of stuff. Like have some gel sacks, maybe some oop, some, maybe some deep shrooms and some blood oil and stuff. A lot of the stuff that you we wouldn't have to dive deep for. We can just like plant it at our base. Okay, I think this is the way out. There's a mixture of great materials here too, so I think with this... Yeah, I think we're out now. Yeah, we're gonna put a beacon here. So let's grab this fight last beacon that we have, and we're gonna put it here. I'll quickly name this one, just so I know. Uh, we're just going to call this um, Cave Entrance. I have uh, Caps Lock on, so this is just very specifically Cave Entrance. So I know the comeback specifically here, and then we can dive into Beacon 2. We can live our best Hansel and Gretel lifestyle. Perfect. Okay. Need to remember where it is. We're going to litter this whole planet with beacons. We'll probably make some more. So we're going to head back. Uh, we're going to do the, the arduous journey right now um, and head back all the way back to my stuff. And then we'll be able to head out this way, which will, which will be good. Okay, we're gonna build some stuff. Um, so we're going to make copper wire. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the. We're gonna upgrade. Do a scanner room upgrade. Need a computer chip for that, and um, I think I can install that now. So. Oh, I need some magnetite. Because what we're going to do is we can scan for particular things, then I can keep it on my... I can actually have it on my HUD, which is cool. So then I don't need to take the camera drones out and then do it that way. So we'll put a little upgrade in here. Where are you? Hmm? Where does that go? I can't see it. It's, it says, look, number one, but it's not in my inventory. What the hell? Oh! Oh, what the fuck? Oh. Oh, it's right there. Okay, that's what, obviously, that's like a little chip symbol. Okay. And you equip it. Okay, I thought I had to install it into the scanner room upgrades. All right, that makes so much sense. I was like totally just not knowing what to look for. Okay, cool. Uh, we've got the HUD chip. Uh, the range upgrade I would also like to do as well. Uh, so we're doing, we're going to try and hunt for some copper ore. So the good thing is, let's do some limestone chunks. We can scan. And then it shows up for me, which is awesome. And then I can just unequip it when I don't want stuff 
cluttering my screen. So that's perfect. So we're going to try and get some copper because I also want to make the sonar upgrade for the Seamoth. That is the that is the current plan. Uh, because yeah, I want to upgrade the range of the scan as well, because at the moment it's only coming up with this one thing here. Oh, there's another one. Okay, um, not where I thought it would be. Hold on. Where are you? Not even in this area, okay. Upgrading the speed would be pretty good too. Of it all showing up. This is gonna oh there look at that, look at it all. Alright, this is great. This will this will help tremendously. Like, I specifically need to get copper. I'm assuming that you can't just search for copper and the game would tell you which which limestone has copper in it. I don't know if it works that way. Because it seems like it might be a random chance, whatever you get. But at the very least, this is nice. Especially when we need some, like, lower tier items in the starting area so we don't have to take a scan a room all the way into the deep for this i'm really liking these uh these upgrades that we're coming across that are it's it's funny that it's like quality of life upgrades within your own experience like you are upgrading your quality of life not like a game update that's like you can do this now it's like i can do this now <laughs> building stuff um later on to make our experience um, much nicer All right, well, oh it just they just keep coming All right that's nice even without the range upgrade then that's still gathering quite a bit I guess just the longer it scans for, the further and further out it goes, potentially. Okay, well, I've definitely got enough of what I need right now, so I'll just, I'll cut it there. Got me limestone chunks. Welcome With me copper, so let's make another copper wire. And I want to make some more beacons as well. So the copper and titanium that we found was good. So we're going to take some more beacons with us. Just in case we need to Hansel and Gretel our way out of here. Also, we don't have a power cell charger yet. We don't have the full blueprints um, for it. Um, but what what is nice is when you rock up to your base with the moon pool, we can take a, a power cell out of the prawn suit for example and then put the uh the flat battery in there and then that'll charge and then you can swap it over uh so i think that that's very neat so while we don't technically have the <laughs> power cell charger there are ways to still get your stuff charged which is very good all right let's put our basic stuff in there i've rearranged my lockers um we've got like the more basic materials here uh like another tier, higher tier materials, you know, to kind of mix it up a bit, because you cannot see the contents and you cannot label them, you know? Okay, I want to make sure that we can hydrate, so we're going to... We're going to prep ourselves with some bleach. Alright, so I just need some coral tubes. We've got a whole bunch of salt. 
Um, so I'm going to go get some tube samples, and then I guess this is the point where you can take the scanner chip off if you don't want to deal with that. Um, okay. Actually, I could upgrade both the speed and the room range, actually. So let's do that. I'm going to do that too. I remember I literally it literally leaves my brain as soon as I go away I was like what did I need again hopefully I think that's enough um, all right we'll get the range upgrade and we get the speed upgrade now these should both go in here right yes cool okay we have a speed and a range upgrade which is awesome so does the map? I'm assuming the map gets bigger. And it scans a little faster. Cool. It's cool that oh you oh yeah, no shit. We can scan for fragments. That's really cool. So we can scan for fragments. So even scan for heat areas, which is great. Scanning for wrecks is awesome. I love that. So we can go and check out some things for blueprints. Let's scan for some fragments, actually, because I guess it was scanned for ones that we don't have. So we might find Cyclops stuff and we might find um, the um, Cyclops and the, the power cell charger. Very good. I also need to, I actually should probably finish this medical kit fabricator, shouldn't I? That would be, that would be smart. Um, <clears throat> Let's have a look. What am I missing? Computer chip, five mesh silver, or titanium. Okay, I need a computer chip. And the fiber mesh. Creep vine sample we can do. And that we can also do. Ah, lovely. See no matter no matter how much um no matter how much building that you've done there will always be more and I, I'm gonna need to get some more limestone chunks which means I should have kept the limestone chunks as the, uh, the scannable thing All right, let me get these um, let me get that There's actually quite a lot of fragments. Oh, I just realized that... I did just realize that it's going to be... Probably... Hmm. It's probably going to be a lot of fragments that we've actually already scanned before as well. It's not just going to scan for unique... Um, fragments. It kind of feels um, very obvious <laughs> when you when you think about it that way actually very obvious um, painful okay uh, hold on so we might actually end up wasting a bit of time in the fragment search department because it'll probably just be yeah stuff that we've already found but <coughs> but I mean that's the only way you got to clear them out isn't it Right, let's quickly make this fiber mesh before the creep vine doesn't like existing anymore. I think I'll leave the um, I'll leave the fragment search for another day because that's going to be an adventure in itself. Because I yeah I just realized with the the fact that we'll probably just be finding a lot of duplicates. So it might even be a better idea to have the scanner even pick for wrecks maybe 
and then we can focus on unique stuff that you can find in in Rex. That might be the better way to do things. Let's store some water in there. Perfect. Let's just get a cheeky bit of coral. Should be some just over here. I like how, you know, the starting area actually just has a lot of what you need, you know, a lot of those basics. And if this scanner room keeps being good, I won't have to pack it up and move it deeper into the ocean. Um, so let's let's go back to limestone for a sec. So I can get some more copper. So yeah, I, I, I need to I need to finish. <clears throat> I need to finish this because this is just silly that I've been leaving that there. I forgot all about it. I forgot all about it. Welcome aboard, Captain. All right, first things first, we're sitting on another upgrade. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to the perimeter defense system. I think I'm doing just fine without it. I'll be, I'll be real. I'm doing just fine without it. You know why? Because I haven't used it. But also it does use a significant amount of power um, that I don't know if I can really afford to use down in the depths, you know? Just is the way of things. Okay, there's my second medical kit fabricator. Finally built after that was sitting there doing nothing for so long. Um, let's ditch some stuff here. And we'll be ready to Almost out of magnetite as well. So there you go. Uh, we know where to get more at the very least, which is good. Do the classic change the batteries over in your devices before we leave. I'm going to leave that Pathfinder. I'm going to leave that Pathfinder tool behind as well. I'm going to bring the stasis rifle just in case there's danger. Um, but yeah, we're heading back to use the, we're primarily heading back to that place to use the purple tablet on that barrier. Uh, in the storage, we will be storing our beacons. Another fire extinguisher upgrade. This is actually a really great thing about the Seamoth storage is you can store the, your upgrades, actually, you know, store your upgrades. So if you need to change them over at any particular time, you can do that. Um, specifically, like, you know, you're like, oh, I need to charge my, my power cells, you know? I'll quickly just sit up on the surface for a little bit, charge it during the daytime. It's, uh, it's not a bad idea, actually. It's not a bad idea. Um, then we've got that for when we want to leave. I'll put that in my inventory, that in there. So we've got some mods, we've got some beacons, we've got a replacement power cell just in case as well. Um, I'm... Mm, Propulsion cannon. It might be, you know, propulsion and repulsion cannon when we eventually build that cannon might be might be worth it. Just preparing for our for our journey. Our fire extinguisher away. 
take one with us actually. Lovely. All right. I think we're ready to leave. Um, I like that we can just unequip that if in case we don't want to see it. But the good thing is, anyway, is I think we'll be heading out too far that it won't even matter. Alright, so we'll be heading back to our beacon, which is cave entrance. Off we go. And here we go. We followed uh, followed our little breadcrumb beacon trail. Back to the facility. There we go. And here we are, at Beacon 2. Okay. So it turns out the tablets are universal. I was thinking initially when they were talking about making them that there would be maybe different symbols for different locations, but it turns out that one symbol, one tablet fits all, which is nice. All right. Integrating new PDA data. We got the specimen research data. It'd be great if you could um, take the tablets back after you're done with it. Seems that it's a one and done situation. Okay, terminal data, specimen research data. Catalog of information on the organisms previously contained within the alien facility. A number of entries have been translated. A small herbivore gamma. This entry seems to reference the common peeper. Shows no immunity to infection. Death commonly occurs within four days. Shows symptom remission on exposure. Oh. Shows symptom remission on exposure to enzyme 42. Is this, this would be the, the peepers that we've seen. The sparkling ones. But symptoms quickly recur. Shows advanced learning behaviors. Shows some capacity to transmit enzymes to other specimens. Oh. I wonder if we ate one. I wonder if we can eat them to get a little bit of a uh, little bit of remission. Leviathan embryos, adult specimen too large to study in containment. Egg specimens acquired from nesting site. Embryos show no signs of immunity. Death commonly occurs within three weeks. Small sample of eggs has been retained for continued high priority research on Leviathan hatching mechanisms. Large carnivore theta. Off-site lab established to study the remains shows some potential for immunity to infection, but physical remains so far proved insufficient for full reconstruction. Unidentified leviathan. The leviathan species has been assigned, assigned designator C. emperor. Bone samples from emperor specimens indicate some potential for Kara immunity. Single specimen captured for study at purpose-built containment facility constructed in volcanic region at depth 1.4 kilometers. It goes even further down. Okay, what a name. The Sea Emperor. You don't get more badass than that. Emperor of the Sea. At a purpose-built containment facility in a volcanic region. Where though? 1.4 kilometers, okay. While it is unlikely that the Emperor specimen is still contained within the facility described, it may be possible to acquire further data there on the aliens' attempts to develop a vaccine. Okay, so we have to go 1.4 kilometers down, which means we definitely need uh, a Cyclops because Seamoth is not going to cut it. We'll just swim down, guys. It'll be fine. Um to go to a purpose-built containment facility. It doesn't say the location, just that it's in a volcanic region. So we just, what? We just go down until we find volcanoes. Where in the world has there even been a place that we can go down that far? It must be a cave or an entry system. That's a big old, that's a big old lead though. So that looks like that's going to be uh, our, our way out of here. I'll take this beacon with us because I don't think I don't think we're gonna need to find our way back here. 
don't think we will. Um, but that was that was worth coming back with the purple tablet for that. Um, I guess now what we can do is we've got. Um, Alien facility location. So we've got a thermal power facility, which is 1200 meters down. Inside an extensive natural rock formation in an area of intense volcanic activity. So that's definitely got to be close by to the, I'm assuming it's got to be this, the primary containment facility. And it's data corrupted because we, we just found some more information on it containing the sea emperor apparently and there's an off-site laboratory and two sanctuaries okay so we at least have a clue an extensive natural rock formation in an area of intense volcanic activity um generate energy for all local facilities what's good about this is there when we were trying to find this place we did see an area that had like a lot of volcanic activity deep on the ground, but it wasn't 1,200 meters down at all. It was only a few hundred meters down. So that might be the area to start in potentially, but we'll see. Um, all right, let's uh, let's get ourselves out of here. Uh, cool. Actually, let's, I want to use this. All right, so we have to activate the sonar. So let's, let's use this for the first time. That's cool. So it's just like a one-time ping. Oh, and it's a three. It's a three sixty ping too. Ooh. I guess we could use that to try and find our way through some cool cave systems. Maybe uh, see if there's any giant predators nearby. Yeah, it does. It does pick them up. How cool is that? All right, we're gonna avoid that fucker. Warning. Oh, oh! Hang on. Hang on. That's looking mighty volcanic to me, and this is a huge way down. Oh! Uh, hang on a minute. This might be our spot. This might be where we go down. Okay, hang on. So I'm actually going to place the beacon here. Um, I'll put our beacon here. I'm being yelled at. Yep. I'm being yelled at. Okay. Oh, fuck. Okay. I think we went the wrong way, but it actually we we've literally found the way down. I think so. I've, I, we're putting that beacon there again. I didn't have time to name it. I'm being fucking attacked. Um, so that's beacon number two. I think that's our way down to volcanic land. Um, good shit. Okay. I see. I see red hot stuff down there. I'm going to assume that's uh, at least the thermal power place. But that's good. That's good. All right, let's get let's get out of here, and we'll we'll return. So it seems that it might all be connected through this one giant cave subsystem. Yeah, I went. I went the other way. <laughs> I was like, I th "Is are we going this way to get out?" And no. But I found what I wanted. Now we have to focus on. Well, I, mm, we can focus on both a prawn and a cyclops and then put the prawn in the cyclops and then go and have fun. But we need to find... Ooh, grappling hook. We need to find a bridge blueprint. Uh, two of those. One hull blueprint. A blueprint. Then I'm not sure what else gets built. But maybe this will be my time to start scanning for both uh, fragments and um, 
both fragments and shipwrecks to find some Cyclops evidence, and then we can submarine ourselves down even further, which is so cool, but so terrifying at the same time. And again, I've trapped myself in this silly little area. <laughs> But this is very exciting because it feels like we're close to some some good shit. So we can focus on chasing our leads for the infection. Get ourselves all fixed up. Then we can shut down the quarantine by not being an infected individual. Um, and then we can build an escape rocket. Get the hell out of, off of this uh, off of this rock. Somehow I'm even more lost than before. Uh, I'm trying to find myself the way out. Sometimes, even if you place a beacon, it's going to be difficult. Um, I'm going to try and get some more crystal and sulfur. Because what I think we can do is, instead of the sea moth, prawn suit might be the way to go. Because we have a prawn suit. And if I can just upgrade this bad boy by finding substances that we've never seen before, like the nickel ore. We might be able to, um, we might be able to, to do a good job, uh, and see how we go. Now, I think I remember, um, I think I remember th this area, because, um, I remember these fucking things. So I think we're close to that giant, um, nice, I can scan this, um, we're close that giant fossilized uh, remains. Now we have a crystalline sulfur back home because we found it when we were last here. Welcome so we're going to have a look around this area for more and then um, lead. Okay. And we're going to try and see if maybe uh, nickel could also potentially be located in this area as well or at least just in the depth somewhere because if I can leave here with some good high quality materials we might be able to upgrade the prawn suit when we get back home and it'll just be good for everyone without getting attacked by these would be nice okay what's this lithium okay that's lithium Hmm, that's not what I'm after though. Can you get off of my sea moth, please? We got a couple of deposits here. If we were already down here with the um, titanium, silver, if we were already down here with the prawn suit, this would be great because I'd be able to obviously use the drill arm to drill into these, but. That'll have to wait. Alright, this is a bunch of lithium. At least I'm getting to the point where I can sort of identify some of the minerals um, just by looking at them instead of needing to go right up to them. Oh shit, it's over there. Alright. Um, well, I've got three of those. Oh fuck. Come on, have some have some goddamn nickel ore down this way or something. Oh shit. Alright, well I could come down here with the I could come down here with the prawn and mine it. I should put a beacon on this. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put a beacon on this just in case, because at the very least that means I can come back to a just a a confirmed spot. You know? A confirmed spot. Where there's some nickel. Um, so we'll just put that there. We can find it down here though. So I'm hoping I can find... Um, hoping I can find it on its own. That would be the best. Either in an outcrop or just chilling in the, the acid waters. God, I'm really scared to go out that way because of that Leviathan. I'm not sure what Nickel looks like. The 
the sounds of this place are so wild. Might be good to get as much of this here as we can. I'm glad that there's some like in the shallows because the first time that we found it, we like had a cheeky peek under under the acid. Those noises are so insane. I'm... It's a diamond, isn't it? Oh, it's just diamonds on the walls. Right, it should definitely be possible for us to find nickel on the walls then as well, right? I guess we just need to be observant. To be honest, we've probably gone past some already. But that's what happens when you're slightly panicking. That's what happens when you're slightly panicking. I just found some. Okay. Holy shit, I, I've shit my pants. Okay, uh, we found some. I need a total of five, though. Oh, shit. Okay, we're finding it. Uh, I will scan it. I'll scan it when I'm back home. I'll scan it when I'm back home. Pleasant. That's a juvenile one? Are you fucking joking? That's a juvenile one. You are kidding me, dude. Vital signs stabilizing. That's a baby? No fucking shit. Right, I found time to scan it. Medium hard ductile metal used extensively in production of strong metal alloys. It has applications throughout the construction industry. Oh, breathe. Sulfur is highly reactive, non-metallic element, usually found in abundance underground. Common applications include production of acidic compounds and combustibles. All right, I've got three. I just need two more. And then here's the, here's the stinger. Is when we want to make Prawn Suit Death Module Mark II, Kyanite. Where the hell is that? I need like some Star Wars lightsaber crystals. So that's going to be fun. I'm assuming that's going to be even further down. So we have to do depth module one first before we can think about that. <gasps> Dude, a secret, secret waterfall area. Secret waterfall area. That's my favorite thing in video games. And I get disappointed whenever a game doesn't give me one of those. I've got a secret waterfall area. That's so exciting. Okay. Secret motherfucking waterfall area. Awesome. Um. <gasps> oh, it hurt me. Screw you, dude. You get scanned. Yes. I scanned it. I scanned it. I almost died doing so. But we scanned it. Let's go. Ghost Leviathan Juvenile 
This large predator has adapted to live in deep waters and dark cave systems, attacking anything and everything in its quest to grow larger. I mean, I have the stasis rifle, but I'm just assuming we should try it out. We'll try it out on it. But I, part of me is really just assuming that it's not going to do much, but we'll see how we go. Soft outer membrane and elongated body enable superior navigation of tight cave environments. Displays some similarities to other eel-like predators in the area. However, the ghost leviathan is covered over the electrical prongs of its inner torso with a taut, 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 transparent membrane which delivers superior maneuverability. In its juvenile state, this leviathan feeds on larger herbivores and unfortunate members of its own species. They display a remarkable rate of growth, which shows no signs of stopping, suggesting that they must abandon their hatching grounds before they grow too large and make for more open waters. Avoid. So it is, that's why they are out of bounds. First time you even equipping the stasis rifle as we inspect it. Fuck. Okay, I'm gonna. I don't know how to use this. Does that work? Is it in stasis? Is that what that little icon is? Alright, I'm. Hmm. Hmm? Okay, not sure. Not sure. <coughs> oh, there we go. All right. That does not stop it. Yeah, that does not stop it for long. Okay. Does not stop it for long. Understood. Stressing out, baby. Stressing out. I haven't saved in 5,000 years either, so let's quickly do that. Um, we're going to go check out Secret Waterfall, and then we'll come back for some more nickel ore. Whoa! Oh, that's awesome. Oh, this is super cool. Okay. The Gungan City type beat? Otto Gunga. It is a safe place. Oh, this is so weird. This feels so wrong. They've... So they've been able to drain the water from the place, in a sense. Oh, God. I really, really felt like maybe I'd been able to reach my arms out a little bit more than that and pick it up, but never mind. Y'all got any nickel in this place? It's another one of these. The one that we found in the at the uh, the quarantine platform, I was looking at these and I'm like, this looks like a goddamn Stargate type thing. And now there's another one down here. Huh? I feel like that's what it is. Even when in the advanced blueprints, it talks about it. Uh, the advanced like theory of it potentially being a transportation gate. That's what I think that these are. Um, I don't know how to use them. If that is the case, I'm assuming that maybe they are powered with those uh, ion cubes. So that they're power sources. Maybe it reacts to it if I actually have some in my inventory and I don't. But what's cool about this is that I think that that's a way for us to, like, not fast travel, but, like, you know, teleport ourselves to a cool location. My only concern, I guess, being that 
Like, if we do that, I guess it works better if, like, we maybe leave a ship out here for us. And then there needs to be another activated, there needs to be another, you know, portal. Otherwise, it won't go anywhere, will it? I guess. Um, so we put it with, guess what? Another beacon. This is why we made all of our beacons, baby. So I'm going to put another one here. Um, I don't know what to call it. So we are going to take it and we're going to put it here. And we're going to call it Secret Waterfall. Secret Waterfall, baby. Cool. All right. Really interesting discoveries today. Let's find this final piece of nickel. Just so we have five, so then we can build two prawn modules. And then we're getting the hell out of here. Alright, cool. And I've got my crystallized sulfur, titanium back home. We obviously, I'm going to need much more titanium for the plasteel ingots. I've got rubies back home. Cool. We'll be able to upgrade our prawn suit. And with with said prawn suit um, maybe reach some higher some higher some lower depths I think we might be able to get out this way this is a different exit than I had planned but I think this is also our way out okay <sighs> wasn't even stressed at all there just totally relaxing uh, undersea adventure all right. Uh, cool. Another entrance is here. So Beacon 2 is about a thousand meters that way. It's all the same sort of foresty area. Bloody lovely. Okay. And there's that cave entrance all the way over there. Uh, we've got a nickel deposit. And a secret waterfall. I think that the nickel deposit one will be useful because we've got a little guaranteed source there. So I can take the prawn and drill on it. I'm happy with that. I'm also happy with um, my my beacon usage currently of marking some uh, particular things that are most relevant to us. So let's head all the way back once again to our base. Let's upgrade our prawn. We're, we're opting for the prawn because we don't have the cyclops parts and this is going to be interesting because um, I'm kind of scared with the prawn because it kind of sinks right down to the bottom. Um, so it feels like it would be a, a really good companion to the cyclops because the uh, cyclops can properly take you down there and then you can use the prawn suit for um you know deep sea exploration but if I, if we just take the prawn all the way down we gotta hope that that <laughs> jet jump will uh, get us out um like we haven't actually tested how much that jet jump will get us to a surface you know before it runs out of Runs out of juice. That's what I'm kind of stressed about. Damn. This is what happens when you let that scanning module run, huh? It just becomes crazy out here. I might do... I might engage in some limestone chunk activities. To get both copper and titanium. But also metal salvage will be the way to go as well. done. That was not at all terrifying. Oh, hang on. That's not what I meant to do. Right, 
let's just get as much titanium out as possible. <laughs> Let us build. Let us build and fabricate things. Alright, prawn suit modules. The jet upgrade? And... Titanium ingot. Plasteel ingot. Prawn suit depth module mark one. Awesome. Okay. Prawn suit. Um, where do your upgrades go? Prawn suit. In this side. Okay. Um, jet suit upgrade depth module mark one. 1300 so we can make it to the thermal plant but we can't make it to the containment facility which is 1400 meters down cool all right 1300 on mark one is really good is there a mark three the beacons only has up to mark two <clears throat> i need kyanite for that so i can only assume i can only assume that kyanite has to be found at that depth that we can now traverse terrified of the um terrified of the whole ordeal but we've got to figure this out sooner or later i guess we're gonna do a let's do a test run with the prawn suit and figure out what's going on there oh, so now i'll store all my stuff Could go and build a I'll take a purple tablet with us just in case that would be a smart idea oh hang on where's my I need my knife I need my trusty knife because I'm hungry Where's my knife? Right. Huh? Why do you have to be so fast? Keeper bastard. We have not been in the life pod in so long. We also haven't got a radio message in a hot minute either. Just haven't had a reason to be up here. Remember these waterproof lockers? Remember when that was all that we were? We've come a decent way. Okay. Now what I have to do is we won't be taking the seamoth with us. We need to we need to name the prawn, guys. Okay, this is prawn compatible. Does that mean we can have another storage module on the prawn? Because it's already got one, so it can have another one. <clears throat> we won't have the sonar. Why can't I take that out? Oh, because there's stuff in the. There's stuff in it. Obviously. Um, let's have a look. Because then we can store a bunch more in the prawn. Yeah, okay. Um, does it just get more storage? One, two, three, four, five, six times five. So you can have 30, you can have 30 stuff in there. If you take it out, 
you can have yeah okay it just gives you more storage okay cool gotcha get more storage wonderful all right well, we'll do that that's great actually store that because I don't need it We could build a habitat down there and then come back to it, start again, take apart a moon pool, have all of the parts for it, put a moon pool down there near like, cause it's, it's going to be near a thermal plant. So we could actually power a moon pool via thermal plant down there, which would be very cool actually. So we could have a little deep sea base going on. But we could then build some stuff and then we can have put a scanner room there and then we can leave um, mm, yeah interesting I'm trying to think mm. the cyclops is just going to be the best way to do vehicle transportation or we can just build another seamoth how I mean, it's not too hard to make another sea moth. We can make another one. Down in the depths. We'll see. We also need to name our and customize our prawn suit now. So let's actually customize it. So the the name of the of the prawn suit. Uh, so we've got the Mapo two, which is a sea moth, um, and this one is going to be the Mayprawn one. So this is the the number number prawn. Is there a character limit actually? My prawn collapse. The my, my, oh, there's a character limit. My prawn. I can't see. This is definitely an oversight in the game for them to not just have it pop up with the little text like the beacons do. I guess I just have to look at the actual uh, prawn itself. My prawn. Lops one. Oh, it's just hitting a character limit. Terrible. Okay, well we're just going with the may the, the Maprawn. The the Mayprawn one. Um let's change the color. Black. Um, let's get some let's get some color in here, shall we? Let's get some color. So we've got an orange sea moth. Obviously, the color for prawns, prawns are green. That's, that's like a known fact, is prawns are green. You know. Keep that. The interior needs to be like a healthy red. Where's this stripe? I can barely even see it. Let's make the... I'm obviously kidding. We're going to change that. I don't like the green. Let's have it be red. I, I, I changed the color to a very accessible um, color. Uh, so I can actually find it, you know, in the ocean. a prawn. Now, I need to find out how this jet thing works. Yeah, that's pretty good. So the, the flashlight on it is automatic. And then we've just got our two arms. We've got the drill arm and the punching arm. It's just gonna take us we gotta walk we gotta walk to our destination if we want to go all the way back to um the secret waterfall nickel deposit and that area down there it's it, how weird is that that it's like actually kind of directly below us almost 
It's just the actual way to get there is the tough part. All right. We're going to save our game. And we're taking our prawn suit down into the depths. And we're going to see how much of a good or a bad idea this is. This thing's kind of hilarious. You can just kind of float for a while. You skirt yourself along with the jet. Eventually, you'll need to recharge it. <laughs> it's kind of fun, though. So we can make our way to the entrance pretty well. And I guess the good thing is... is at least always going to be some semblance of... Uh, rocky surfaces for us to jet back up on top of. Ooh, we dropping in. Get into the cave entrance, and then from the cave entrance we go... 1600 meters that way. So they get to that beacon. It's the nickel deposit. Oh, and I had an, I've had my epiphany, by the way, is when we were in the prawn, um, and we were picking up stuff, and it I wasn't in my inventory. Uh, it, I've just realized that it goes straight into the prawn's storage. That's uh, on on the actual suit, which makes a lot of sense. So it puts it in its own suit. Makes a lot of sense. So it's a good thing that that prawn's got its storage all sorted out. I will tell you that diving into the depths in the prawn suit is uh, so much more terrifying than the sea moth because the sea moth you have full movement control. The prawn suit is kind of just a controlled descent the whole time and that's, that's kind of terrifying. We're just going down, hoping for the best. Especially as it makes that powering down noise. The descent is much faster though. It's kind of fun in that sense. All right. Kind of wish that the lighting on it was a bit stronger, but what can you do? I'm excited. So we can go, we can go 1200 meters to this thermal facility. We can go a max of 1300 down. I like that, that this game has uh, objectives that are, hey, this is 800 meters down and you get the 900 meter depth upgrade. And then this is 1200 meters down, you get the 1300 one. So you get a, you know, obviously some, some wiggle room there with your, uh, with your vehicles. The prawn suit is kind of quieter, I feel. At least for me. Oh yeah, we can go under here. We'll just... Ooh, hang on. What's this? What is that? What is that? I can't even, like, interact with it. What is that? Oh, this is so cool. Okay, so we can drill. What is this? I don't think that's anything. It looks like something. Maybe I could scan it, but um, if I scan anything down here, I'm dead. Oh, this is... This is one surefire way to get distracted, going into these little acid pools and finding things. So cool. Okay. Damn, and it's all, they're all kind of just kind of hidden and you need to get in there to really find them. This is exciting because this is all, this is like brand new device for exploration. And we're personally going to fight off any ghost leviathans. Smack him in the face. Yeah, we can... <laughs> we can pick up fish as well if we're fast enough. 
otherwise we'll squish them. I mean, you guys can try, but I will, I will beat you. I will beat you. Getting closer and closer to this beacon. Um, I hope that this is where our thermal facility actually is. It seems very likely, considering it's a pit in the ground with some lava looking stuff. And that's what the game wants from us. Just replenish this jetpack real quick. Whee! You know what? I'm always going to need titanium. How much do we get? I'm curious now. Oh, cool. Two. That makes so much sense because it says added to vehicle storage. I just need to know how to read. Interesting. Okay. Oh, still more. Nice. Um... How much was that? Like 10 or 11? 2, 4, 6. Yeah, 11 pieces. Okay. Can't believe it's not an even number. That, that infuriates me. Okay, so 11. Maybe it varies based on the type of deposit you're going for. Is that is what you get? But that's cool. We've got some specific deposits now. Very cool. Let's save. As we approach this beacon area. This game is so magical. Closer and closer. I just want to need to mine those deposits of the, whatever it's called, the uranium stuff. Eventually for, um, probably the escape. Okay. See you later, juvenile leviathan. I'm dropping down here and we're dropping really fast. Oh, how deep is it? Oh God. Oh, <laughs> I love that we're just diving right into it. Oh shit. Okay. There are rays down here too. Okay, okay. Let's try and find a platform. Let's try and find a platform. Just to chill for a sec. Dude, this is so cool. Okay. I guess the prawn suit hopefully prevents uh, some pretty significant dehydration, but I should have maybe brought more water. Just in case, because I, I, I don't know how much we're actually affected. Because the suit is 50 degrees. So that probably affects our time spent down here. That is one thing I didn't actually account for, silly me, is, hey man, it's gonna be fucking hot. Maybe you should bring some water. Oh, this is cool. All right. Imagine the lava powered base that we could build down here. Leave me alone. Okay, shit, we're approaching 1300. Damn, this might be the way to the containment facility then, and not the thermal... Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, shit! It, that's what happens. Oh, that's how I died that time. It teleports me out of the vehicle and then tries to kill me. Fuck you, you bastard. Leave me alone! I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying myself! Let me break quarantine. 
Okay. Oh, actually, if we keep going up this way, there's potential we might find. Whoa. <gasps> Ooh! What the fuck? Whoa! Oh shit, is this the Kraken thing that they were talking about? The Degasi survivors? And is this Kyanite, motherfucker? Whoa! I don't know if I can survive standing on lava. Oh! It's breathing hellfire at me! Wow! Oh, oh shit! Punch it! Punch it off! Punch it off! Whoa! No fucking shot, dude. <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! Whoa, my god. Look at that thing. Sorry, buddy. You're gonna have to let me get this kyanite. Alright, I can walk on lava. Alright, let's drill. Yes! Lightsaber crystals! I just need three. Am I safe down here? Oh shit, I'm being... Uh, fuck, I'm being burned alive. Hold on. I'm being burned alive. Oh shit. Oh, actually, I think I realized what's happening. I just realized what's happening. I just realized what's happening. It's the lava that's damaging the thing. I thought I was taking damage from the flame breathing kraken creature thing. Okay, 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 okay. I understand now. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, this takes so much longer to repair. Holy shit. Just a little bit warm. Okay. This is. Hey, sir. Hi. Respectfully, please leave me alone. I will stasis rifle your ass. Oh. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I don't know how to do this without getting fucked up. I think we're good. Yeah. All right, I'm not taking damage. Yes, we're getting kyanite. Right. Which means we can upgrade our prawn to even greater depths. This is the greatest moment of my life. <gasps> you're not, you're not. Oh, my inventory's full. I thought it was getting deleted. Oh, shit. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, panicky, 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 panicky. Panicky, panicky stuff. Give me all of that. Give me all of that. Give me that. Give me that. Into the prawn. Get the kyanite. Get the kyanite, get the kyanite. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Be gentle with it. Get the stuff. Get the stuff while I'm being screamed at. Stand to the edge here so I don't take damage. Pick up more kyanite because I'm probably going to need more at some point in my life. Okay, that was exhilarating. Holy crap. Look at that thing! That is insane. Okay. Um, I think that I am going to accept that we are very much out of our depth here and we need, we should leave. Uh, we've got our kyanite. We found kyanite, uh, but at what cost? Okay. I genuinely am in, in awe of this thing. Wow, I want to scan it so bad. So if we have a, if we go to our survivors for Degasi, one of the final things is the rupture through me clear of the habitat, the monster turned board damage just as its tentacles came with each reach. Was it? Like, I don't know if it's about this, because they were talking about this. Came out of nowhere, an alien kraken bigger than a cyclops. I'm pretty sure. It's got to be this thing, right? It's got to be this thing. 
Dude. I know I said that we should leave, but also, like, nothing ventured, nothing gained, dude. Look at this place. I'm in hell. Whoa. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. Hang on. This might be the thermal plant. We're 1,200 meters. We're, we're 1,200 meters. So this might be it. And then we'll go back to base, use the kyanite to get the prawn depth module mark two. Then we can go, God, even deeper down and get 1,400 meters down. This is the stuff that excites me. This gets me going. Minecraft. Nice. Okay. Guess what that means that we can do... Oh yeah, it's warm. It's warm. Um, beacon. Um, just <laughs> the one beacon that I've left. Alright, um, let's quickly put a beacon here. So we can remember where this is, just in case I gotta leave and come back. I don't know if that's actually gonna happen, but at the very least, we'll put this here and say... I'm gonna... I think 1200 meters down, I can assume that this is the place. Thermal plant is what we're gonna call it. The volcanic rock which has formed in this area can be carbon dated to between 800 and 3000 Earth years ago. Jesus. Um, actually, this is looking a little different. <gasps> Creature eggs down here. Okay, this is not what I was thinking for a thermal plant. This is a little bit different. I'm hungry, though, so I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat. Actually, I need to scan you first, because you're a red eye eye. Hurry up, I don't have much time out of here. All right, thank you. Okay, cute. Eat. Um, is it not in here? Let's get it. Ah, right here. Red eye eye. Small herbivorous creature with poor maneuverability evolved to inhabit high temperature environments. Thermal camouflage, deep red and orange coloration, enables this subspecies to blend into volcanic environments and reflect environmental thermal energy, thus rendering it almost invisible to most predators. Thermal vision. Delicate light-based eyesight is impractical at these temperatures, and the red eye eye has developed thermal vision in its place. In this species, volcanic domain, edible plant matter, and potential predators are the coldest entities in the range. That's pretty awesome. Very loud. <laughs> the punch. That punch is crazy. Oh, it's dead. I cooked it though, right? No? Okay. I sliced it, it didn't count. Damn it. Alright, don't don't kill it with the prawn. You can't cook it when it's already dead, apparently. Alright, so there will be creature eggs to find out here. I've got more than enough kyanite right now, so I'm going to leave that stuff well alone. Oh, here we go. Wait, where did I put that beacon? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Yeah, I found it, though. Here it is. Okay, we have one purple tablet. Hopefully that is enough. How the fuck are there boomerangs down here? Is it a different type? It is. 
Oh, a magma ring. Magma ring. Magma ring. The organism is an adaptation of the common boomerang evolved to survive in high temperature environments. Dark red coloration helps this subspecies to blend into um, uh, igneous rock environments. Orange detailing resembles active lava flow, deterring more cautious predators. Marginally bolder than its shadow, a shallow dwelling cousins, the magmarang will nonetheless flee any creature larger than itself with impressive speed. Lovely. Here's the entrance. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Can I get in with the prawn? Ah, oh, the prawn can get in, but the sea moth can't, and that makes so much sense because the sea moth... Oh. Um... I died. What the fuck? What the f what? What the fuck? What happened there? I just walked in and died immediately, not even enough time to think. My... My prawn's still down there. Um... What in the world? Um... Oh... What? Listen, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna reload because I'm not sure what the fuck happened there. Like it, it like I got teleported, but then I was just killed immediately. So I'm assuming there must have been a wizard fish around there, right? My prawn's fine. Yeah, that, that that's just annoying. That's just annoying. It's a good thing I saved within the last five minutes. God, that just that just annoys me actually. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Don't disrupt my flow. We're not letting a wizard fish disrupt our flow today. Then I have to make another prawn or something, you know? Passing 200 meters. Oxygen efficiency. Okay. So we're back to this section. Oh shit. Well now I've got the attention of this fucker. Um hang on. I think we saved it after we got all that kyanite, so that's okay. So we haven't lost too much. We haven't lost too much progress. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Holy shit, man. It's gotta be the coolest fucking thing. Hey, baby. Wait, that doesn't make sense. I'm underneath you. You can't bite on me like that. Hey. Kraken beast. All right. Okay, let's do this again. Um, <coughs> without getting warped, preferably. Let's put our beacon here again. Okay, we have significantly less kyanite. That's okay. I'm not in a desperate need for it at the moment, and we know where it can be found. Okay. Okay. Beacon is down. It's not giving me the uh, the tourist information anymore. You don't want to tell me how old this place is, game? Volcanic rock that is formed in this area can be carbon dated to between 800 and 3000 Earth years ago. Just gotta eat again, real quick. Let's, let's take some creature eggs, though. I don't know what the deal is, but maybe, uh, maybe when we go back to base, we can actually have a cheeky look into it and see what it's all about. 
If there's any eggs to get, it's got to be ones in the depth of a vol volcano. Ooh, what is that? It is not friendly. Lava lizard. Cool. Lava lizard. Medium-sized predator adapted for life in volcanic regions and remarkably able to spit molten rock at its foes. Four mounted mandibles designed to do maximum damage to prey, sharp internal teeth, tear through flesh and bone alike. Scar tissue, likely due to regular exposure to magma, lava lizards build up a thick layer of scar tissue over time, which enables them to withstand ever greater temperatures inside and out. Behavior, it is able to both defend itself by burying its body in magma and to go on the offensive by spitting molten rock at its foes. Void, especially in the presence of lava flow. Sure. Alright, we're back out here again. Ah, uh, there's, yeah, there's a wizard fish. Okay. Oh, these are, they're huge. Mm, okay. Um, what we're going to do now is that. How the hell did I get teleported while I was in the base? When the wizard fish is outside. Right, let's try this again, shall we? I'm gonna repair this guy. I'm gonna store some stuff in there. I'm going to quickly save my game and hopefully it's fine, just in case any bullshit happens. Ooh. Nice. This is good because we've got a purple tablet, but guess what? Before we do that... Ooh. Oh, we can mine... Oh, we can use the prawn. Before we open it up, we're going to have a look and double check if there's more than one door to open because we've only got one tablet. That is our problem. All right. Let's take the prawn with us. I feel like that teleportation was not supposed to happen because now we're just walking around the base just fine. You know? Cool. Okay, we can harvest it here. Alright, in that set, in that case, I need to pull from this to make sure that I can actually this. This is awesome. That is not the button I was meant to press. I don't know how many of these we're going to end up needing, but like, I can't imagine that this is uh, not a good idea. No, this is probably a great idea. Very cool. Okay. Got a... Oh, shit. Okay. There's another one. Huh. Okay, the other two that we've found do not have this, but this one does. Okay, we've finally actually found that it has a, a purpose, it has a use. Insert iron cube. It is a portal. It is a portal. But to where? You know? Oh, that's very, very fucking cool. Uh, I don't know where that is. My brain wants to tell me that there are sending gates and receiving gates with the fact that we found two that don't have this here. But I don't know where this goes. So we're going to just leave that for now. 
but that is very that's a very cool discovery transportation whoa that's what i can hear transportation between facilities is uh really really a great idea alien robot uh friend or foe Little, little robot spider. This device is of alien origin, although its design is relatively simple. Its low level threat level is at odds with the advanced technology apparently available to its designers, suggesting it was intended more to patrol alien facilities and repair damaged infrastructure than to deter invaders. And they're just little uh, janitor droids. Despite its simple design, this construction is quite elegant in its minimalism. Four electromagnetic legs allow it to traverse floors, walls, and ceilings with reasonable speed and appear to be replaceable. Internally, there are a few moving parts, rendering this construct energy efficient and resistant to wear over time. A rechargeable iron-based power reserve ensures it continues to operate. Assessment, immobilize and return to Altera for mutual profit. Okay, it wants us to actually... Cut. I thought you were minimal threat level. Well, you attacked me first, you bastard. Where'd it go? Um. Where did it go? Okay. Just disappeared. I'm sure there'll be another one. Fuck. I just vanished. I'm sure there'll be another one, right? Hmm. Okay, it was just the one. Because now this is the outside again. Damn it! Did it just bug out and just disappear? Well, now I'm going to reload my save again. <laughs> now I'm going to reload my save again. Uh, because it bugged out and disappeared. The robot bug bugged out. Uh, we'll just reload in. And then I will try and gather it again. And then we're going to step through this portal, I suppose. Very exciting and stressful. Okay, give me all of this. Welcome aboard, Captain. Oh yeah, and then I can use the purple tablet um, as well. All right, let's put the let's put the cube in the thing. And then, let's see where this thing, little guy is. Sounds like it's down. Oh, the sound is all over the place. All right, maybe it'll be easier to get if it's on the ground. Oh, I should, yeah, wait, should scan it again. Ugh, ah! I'll scan you again. All right, let's go, you bastard. Just don't disappear. Okay, so no, so it just shatters into a bunch of pieces and then it just goes. So how am I supposed to retrieve it? Immobilize. Oh, okay, wait, immobilize. Maybe I can stasis gun it instead of actually, that might actually be the smarter choice. I mean, like, Maybe pick it up with some stasis. That's the only other thing I can think of that'll work. Okay, we'll we'll figure this out. We'll get there. I've I've saved after mining the iron cubes, just in case. So that's good. Okay, immobilize, not destroy. So, stasis rifle. Let's go for that instead. Hmm. Well, that doesn't work. 
Okay, how do I just... Hmm. How do we immobilize it? Welcome aboard, Captain. Because that's just going to destroy it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave it here. We're just gonna leave it alone. Um, not sure how we can immobilize it. Is there like a thing that we don't have that would come in useful for it? Oh, you could like hmm. use the propulsion cannon to like pick it up, but then. I don't think you can actually like store it. You build a gravity trap, but then can you, I don't know if you can, you know, take it with you. I don't know. Um, I don't know. If I got a, I should have the propulsion cannon with me. God, there's a hole downstairs. Damn, okay. There is a second um, barrier. So we need two purple tablets. And my second purple tablet is back home. This room looks much more important than the other one, though. Fossil data. New PDA Fossil data recorded from the volcanic rock that was excavated to construct the alien power facility. It has been possible to extrapolate a number of key trends. Genetic divergence. The aliens recorded data on indigenous organic remains originating between 10,000 and 1,000 years ago. The life forms on record feature an unusually low overlap with those encountered so far on 4546B. Extinction events. Soil samples from 1,000 years ago contain 300% higher concentrations of organic remains than the soil average. Data supports a mass extinction event, killing off a majority of species and forcing rad rapid adaptation amongst many of the survivors. Crazy. Okay. Um, gotcha. Yeah, this looks like a much more important room than the one upstairs. So if there's a choice between my two tablets, might go there, but then also we can figure out where this teleporter will go as well. Okay, we're gonna leave this alien... We're gonna leave this alien spider thing alone until we can figure out what immobilizing it will actually do. Okay, so this looks like it's going to be an item of some kind in the back there. And then the other one is going to be information in that room it, because there's a data terminal in there. Hmm. Now, we could be shitty and we could save the game and find out what's in both. But that kind of doesn't feel... That feels cheeky. Um, we'll probably have to make our own tablets soon as well. Mm. Do we want a unknown random item in the back here? Or do we want lore and information downstairs? I think we're going to go for lore and information downstairs. And then we're going to go through the portal and see what happens. Should have brought spare tablets just in case. Ooh, alien thermal plant. This system is directly converting local thermal energy into electric current at 90% efficiency. Most of this energy is being stored in the battery-like devices within the plant itself, each of which holds enough to power a small city for a year. Some of it, however, is being drained off, presumably as it is distributed to other facilities on the planet. 
A power plant appears to be fully automated and given current understanding of the mechanisms involved, uninterruptible. Let's get the middle one first, just in case. It's a different color. We haven't interacted with one of those before, so I don't know if it's something different might happen. Data downloads for the primary containment facility. A power router. Alien facility location updated. Volcanic area connected to this cave system at depth 1.4 kilometers. We found it. Uh, we need to Upgrade to Mark II Prawn Depth Module, and then we can go to a primary containment facility. A power router in the thermal plant is distributing energy collected on site to other facilities on the planet. Primary containment facility location updated. It's constructed within a natural chasm connected to the cave network. It's south southeast, 1.4k down. Power distribution. Self-warping quarantine enforcement units, 5%. Arch network, 10%. Sanctuaries Alpha, Beta, and Kappa. Let's just confirm that there is a third one because I think in the previous thing it was only said A and B, 10%. Quarantine Enforcement Platform, 35%. Disease Research Facility is offline because it is destroyed, kind of. Primary Containment Facility is 20%, and then 20% in reserve. There is no clear way to interrupt power flow, but it says no clear way. So there might be a way to uninterrupt it. Do we want to do that though? Iron power data. It has been possible to extract useful information regarding alien iron power. Ion power blueprints from alien data. Blueprints stored to data bank. Oh, cool. We can now make the iron cubes. Iron cubes are grown artificially from a mineral substance and are treated to remain in a stable state despite the huge ionic energy contained within. By installing an iron cube in an appropriate device, this energy can be released as electrical power. Using this knowledge, it has been possible to synthesize new battery and power cell blueprints which leverage advanced ionic energy to last considerably longer. Oh, that's so cool. So you can make an ion battery with an iron cube. And an iron power cell. Longer lasting batteries, dude. I'm assuming that those would we'd be able to charge those as well. Very cool. Okay. I am happy with my choice to open up this room and then we will we'll just return here at a later date with another purple tablet for what's behind this other door. Very, very cool because we will return here to figure out how to immobilize this fucking thing because I can't do it right now. Okay. Um, let's save our game. Let's get in the prawn. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Where are we going? Where are we? Oh shit, we're back at... This is the quarantine. Is this quarantine? Interesting. I think we're at quarantine. Because I recognize this the, the room with this. Cool, so now... <coughs> so, excuse me. Now it's been activated. Yes, cool, okay. That's really, that's really good because that means that we can now just head on back here and then go through there. Awesome. All right. That makes me very happy. We figured out teleportation gate travel thing, which means we can go back to our, go back to our base, get that other purple tablet and um, check this place check this place out and see what that uh, item is in the back of the room. Um, I don't remember how to get out of here. Uh, 
Uh, that's the actual thing, isn't it? Yep. And then that's the doomsday device thing. I think it's here. Because anyway, this should go into the moon pool. Yes. I know exactly where I am. Nice. I love that it's not a one-way teleport. I think my uh, my main fear that I was about to experience stepping through that portal is we'd be on the other side and then the portal would just like not be active. So I'm very happy that that's not the case and we can just come back here and go through because that skips a lot. So we can we can now go and uh, we can now go and build uh, the next prawn depth module. And go even deeper to the to the primary containment facility, which is where they uh, were or currently keeping a goddamn um, sea emperor to find out some some more information. About this infection. All right, time for us to head on back. We haven't actually we haven't actually explored much of this island as well. By the way, like there's there's way more to this place, and we've only checked out the the main group here actually. So, um, yeah, there's definitely definitely more to do. Definitely more to do here as well. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring this episode of Subnautica to a close with this in mind. And then next time we're going to explore this island a little bit. We're going to head back to our base, restructure everything, uh, recollect, figure out what we're going to do. And then we're going to go back down there through the portal and maybe head to this primary containment facility. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a massive one. Uh, learning a lot, discovering a lot. Um, and it's been super enjoyable. So thank you so much for being here today and I'll see you next time.